I have um, just one more question before I will hand this back to my colleague. Um, this is a, a question that comes out of my constituency, but I think applies right across British Columbia. Um, and I'm, I know that my colleague uh, from Stikine is going to explore this further. So I've had several reports from uh, parts of my community about long wait times for speech therapy especially for early intervention therapies. And we talked earlier, I think the, the minister talked about vulnerabilities for children entering kindergarten uh, and grade one. And speech therapy, of course, is pretty fundamental to that. Uh, my community uh, service providers are reporting um, wait times of up to nine to 10 months. Um, to get to a speech pathologist. Uh, there's only one speech pathologist operating in the West Shore health unit uh, here in, in my community, uh, and one uh, communicated disorders assistant. Because of this, kids are waiting for a very long time to receive assistance. Um, when they do get an appointment, um, they receive a much shorter term therapy than they might, uh, they might need. So um, I, it's my understanding that speech language pathologists are available to do the work, but the shortage of funding uh, decisions by Island Health are impacting this as well. So um, under the umbrella of, you know, early learning and vulnerabilities for children, I want to know if the minister can make any comments about this and about plans. This is something we've been hearing about for a number of years. This is not specific uh, to my community only. We hear it right across um, British Columbia. But is there some plan to reduce these wait times and find ways uh, to help these families make sure their children are ready? Because, you know... Early intervention, as we know, uh, is, uh, has miraculous results, and long wait times can impede a child for the rest of their life. So uh, I'd be interested in what the minister has to say about that. Minister. Um, thank you, Honourable Chair, and through you to the member. Um, I'm not surprised the, the member's hearing that. Um, that is uh, a reality for most of the uh, foundational programs that we fund uh, for kids, so that's speech language, OTPT, through child development centers, um, sometimes health health authorities, sometimes uh, First Nations. I think there was, yeah. So uh, 41 child development centers, five health authorities, three First Nations, and seven school districts. <laughs> um, and, and in all of those cases, there are, there are challenges with meeting the demand for those three services um, in those agencies. So there are wait lists. The, the challenge with speech language pathology is is amplified uh, in some areas of the province not not that in those cases the children aren't prioritized for that service or and waiting for today for a speech language pathologist but the reality is that the speech language pathologists aren't available in that particular part of the province um, in some parts of the province the uh, the speech paths are there uh, but we we don't have the dollars to provide the services um, so what is happening, we're working with all of the agencies that we work with to ensure that as best as possible, um, they are all uh, assessing and prioritizing the same way uh, to ensure that, that kids are getting the services that they need uh, as quickly as possible um, and to really be able to then assess to what the true demand is uh, for each of the services because right now it would be hard to say for sure um, that a child needs uh, is waiting for one service or three services, getting no services, but they're getting, you know, and in some cases they're getting they're getting one, but not they need two more. In some cases they're not getting any. Um, so we're trying to make sure that that assessment and reporting is is consistent across all of the agencies, so we have better data. But we do know, without a question, there are there are weights and and excess demand over what we can provide for uh, in this particular area. 